Edo how to set up and play. First thing you'll do is lay out the game board. You'll use the side based on the player count. One of the sides is for a two or three player game and the other side is for a four player game. If it's a two or four player game, you're gonna block off one of the rice areas, one of the wood areas, and one of the stone areas. This can be at random or the player's choice. Next, you'll put out the profit tiles based on the player count. Since I'm setting this up for a two player game, I'll use the two player profit tile stacks. Randomly shuffle the pink ones and draw one. This will be placed in the center of the game board in the city of Edo. Also in a two or four player game, you're gonna block off one of the cities. The cities are in these outer spots with the building sites. So just randomly block one of those off. And then you're gonna shuffle the other city profit tiles and fill in the other city spots. Next, you're gonna shuffle all the merchant tiles and put out the first one while the next one is always visible to the players. Next, you're gonna shuffle the deck of special authorization cards and randomly deal five to the starting display. Next, set out the supply of fortresses, the neut neutral officials, the stone supply, wood supply, rice supply, and money. For each player, give them their board, their three starting authorization cards, three rice, 20 money, five officials, seven regular houses, one trading house, and their building reference aid. Next, randomly choose a start player, give them the starting player token, as well as the merchant token, and then you're gonna set out the starting game packages. Three rice, two wood, two stone, one wood and a stone, and 10 money. Play always proceeds clockwise from the start player, so the final part of setup, in reverse turn order, starting with the last player, they have two choices. They can select one of these starting packages, or they can place one of their houses into an empty city spot, but not Edo. So since the red player is the last player, let's say instead of selecting a starting package, they decide to place a house in the empty city spot. When they do that, they immediately put one of their officials into that city. Whenever an official comes onto the board for a player, it's now considered a samurai. So now the start player gets to choose. Let's say they choose this resource package. Once all players have made that first choice in a reverse turn order, we do it again. If the player chose a resource package the first time, now they must put a house out. And if they put a house out the first time, now they must choose a resource package. So in this two player game, Red already put their house out. So now they're gonna select their resource package. And now we go back to the start player. Since they already chose their resource package, they need to now put in an empty city spot, not Edo. So since Red chose there, Yellow can only choose here. And again, they'd put one of their officials as a starting samurai on the board. So once you've gone through that process twice where all players get to put a house on the board and get one starting resource package, these can get returned to the game box. Also, all players are gonna start their victory point marker on one victory point on the game board. And the final part of setup is the start player will now place the merchant on one of these three river spots. Each game turn is structured into four phases. All players will plan their actions simultaneously. And then in turn order, each player will perform one of their actions until all players have performed all three of their selected actions. In phase three, we're gonna collect wages and income. And then in phase four, we would simply just prep for the next turn. So in phase one, each player 
will simultaneously select their actions. They'll do this in secret. They'll select their action cards from all the ones they have available to them, select three, and then position it in a way that their chosen action is facing downwards on this board. They'll also assign officials to the actions based on the number of times they'd like to activate it. Once all players have finished, then we move on to step two, which is performing actions. We always start with the current start player, and they would reveal just their first action and then resolve this completely. Once that's finished, we go clockwise to the next player, and they reveal their first action until all players have played their first action. Then it would get back to the start player, and they would play their second action and resolve it completely. Again, go around the table, and then all players would complete their third action. If for whatever reason a player was unable to an, assign an official to an action, they're unable to activate it. So that action would just get skipped during that cycle. But once players have performed all their actions, we would go on to step three, which is wages and income. Before we move to that step, let's actually cover how all the different actions work. The first action is the rice act action. It can be activated up to four times. So for each official that you activate that action, you simply get a rice for each official immediately to your supply. Money works the same way. Activate it up to four times. For each official on the action, collect five money. Next is the development action. You can see it can only be activated once. The X's mean you cannot activate those spots. You simply pay five money to the bank, and this allows you to take one of the five face-up special authorization cards. Select the one you want, and then this would immediately get replenished. These special authorization cards can be used now on your next turn, and they can be used as one of the selected three cards you put on your board. Next is the recruitment action. This can only be activated once. This allows you to pay one rice to the supply and take one of the neutral colored officials into your stock. So just add that to your supply and now this can be used on the next game turn. Next is the travel action. This can be activated up to three times and this gives the player a choice with each activation. They can choose to take the official, as long as it's an official of their color, they couldn't use a neutral official, but they can take an official of their color for this activation and immediately place it on the game board. It has to go into a spot with one of those symbols, but that can immediately go on the game board with that activation. The other alternative you have with an activation is you can move up to two samurai already on the game board to any other spot. So maybe with this activation, I can move this samurai to any other spot, and I can move a second samurai to any other spot. Next are the resource actions. They work the same way, rice, stone, and wood. And these are the actions you're gonna see both. It requires an official to activate it, as well as you can see the shadowed figure that means you require a samurai on the game board in conjunction with the official to activate the action. So by placing this here, I can now use a samurai on the game board that's in the rice spot to collect that resource. And it works the same way for stone and wood. It requires an official to activate as well as a samurai on the stone or on the wood collection spots. One very important option that all players have available to them that I haven't mentioned yet is that before you reveal your current action card, you have the ability to move all of your samurais on the game board. For each spot they move, you have to pay one money to the bank. So let's say I was about to reveal this action card and resolve it, but before I do that, I decide to move this samurai one, two spots, to get them down here. So I'd have to pay two money to the bank and then now I'm ready to resolve this action. I've activated it with an official 
and I have a samurai on the resource collection spot. The number of resources you're able to collect with the activated action is based on how many samurai are currently on this spot of any color. So since I moved here, I'm the only one here, so I can collect for only one samurai being on this spot, so I get to take three rice into my supply. If when coming here, there was another samurai there, so two total, I'd only be able to take two rice. If I made the third samurai, I could only take one, and if there were four or more samurais on the spot, no rice could be taken with that action. And it works the same way for the other resource spots in the game. Two other important rules about the resource actions is that if you activate it twice with two officials, this requires different samurai on the board. So I'd have to have two samurai here, one for each of these officials to activate. Also, players are only ever allowed to have a maximum of 10 of each resource, so 10 stone, 10 wood, and 10 rice at any time. Next is the build action. There are two different types of build actions, one that requires only one official to activate a samurai on the board, and there's another one that requires two officials to activate one samurai on the board. The samurai is going to build the building in the city location they're currently in. So remember, you always have that original option to move the samurai prior to activation, just paying one per space that the samurai is moved until they're in the location desired to take the building action. On the player's reference board, you can see the three different types of buildings that can be built. The player can build one of their regular houses. It's going to cost a stone, two wood, five money. They would put the house into the city spot and they would immediately score one victory point. They can also build their one trading house. It'll cost five wood, 15 money, but it will earn them immediately two victory points. Or they can build a fortress. It's going to cost five stone, a wood, 20 money, and it's going to get them three victory points. So let's say this player used this action, they used one official to activate it, they made sure their samurai was in Edo, and they decide to spend the stone, the two wood, the five money, pay it to the bank immediately, and they can put one house in the first empty spot with the arrow in the city, and then they would get the one victory point on the track immediately. There's a special set of rules for the trading house. A trading house can never be built in Edo. Also, there can ever only be one trading house built in a city. So if yellow built a trading house in this city, it has its maximum of one. Red could not build their trading house in this same city. Finally is the fortress. It has two rules associated with it. To build a fortress, you can build it anywhere but you first must already have at least one house in your color in the city. And also, you can ever only have a maximum of one fortress for every two regular buildings in a city. So if the yellow player wanted to build a fortress here, they have a house already in their color, and there's at least two buildings in the city. So they could build a fortress. Now until another fortress got built, at least one of these other players would have to build another house because there's only three. You need at least two per fortress. So if another player built a house here, now we have four regular buildings. This city can now support two fortresses. And even though trading houses can't be built in Edo, fortresses can be built. So the yellow player, there's two houses and they have a house of their color, they could build a fortress here. The red player couldn't. Even though there's two, they would need at least to get one of their house colors into the city first to make them eligible to build that fortress. One last reminder about building, just like the resource action, if you activate with two different officials, these have to be two different samurais fulfilling the action. The last of the basic actions is the merchant action. It requires an official to initiate it and have a samurai on the board to fulfill it. 
the samurai has to be in the same space as the market. And one option the players have to them, they can always move their samurai before activation. They can also always move the market before activation. So if they wanted to move the market to where their samurai was, or move the samurai to where the market was for each space moved, either for the market or the samurai, it's one money per space paid to the bank. To carry out the market action, the player would now just select one of the two available trades. The top one usually is a trade to get some type of resource. So in this example, they can pay two money. They can do it up to two times. And for every two money, they get one wood. Or they can select the bottom action, which requires seven money and a stone to get one victory point immediately. And they can only do that trade once. And even though you can see which trade action is coming up for the next turn, you're only ever able to select one of the two options on the current market tile. Now, while you normally have to choose the top or the bottom, there is an exception. If your samurai is with the market in the same space and it's in a city with your trading house, you're allowed to take both of the actions. So you can do both of the conversions. So let's say on this turn, the player decided before activation they were going to pay two money, one, two, to move their samurai there, and they pay one money to move the market there. Now they're in the same city with their colored trading house. They have the option now of doing both of the trade actions. Here are some example actions from the special authorization cards. Here you can activate multiple times with each activation, get seven money. Here, you can activate with a samurai on the board, and if you went to the stone market, you would get an additional one stone on top of whatever you were eligible to collect. Here's an example of one, a resource card, when it takes two officials to activate a samurai, but whatever they're eligible to collect for wood in this example, they get to double that amount. Here's an action that can be activated twice. It just takes officials. For each activation, you can turn in three money to get two rice. There are actions that give discounts for building. This one gives a five money discount when doing the building action. There are some that give a wood or a stone discount. Here is one that if you activate it, you can select one of the authorization cards that you did not play. So it could not have been the ones, one of the three that you played, but it could be one of your starting ones. It can be an advanced one. You basically select it, discard it from the game, and immediately collect 30 money. And then finally, here are some other special authorization cards that were part of promo packs. Here, for each official, and you can see it just takes an official, no samurai on the board. For each official, collect one wood. Here, when you're taking the resource action, whatever the samurai is eligible to take in rice, you'd add plus one to it. Here you can only activate once, but you can turn in three money to immediately get two wood. And then here is the carte blanche. Uh, for each activation, you basic, basically select one authorization card that you did not play as one of your three, and then you immediately get to activate one of the four actions on that authorization card. And then whatever officials you put down here, transfer now to that activation. Once all players have completed taking all three actions. We finished the perform actions phase and we're ready to go to the third phase, which is to collect wages and income. There are two steps to this phase. First, players have to pay a rice for each samurai on the game board, and then they're going to collect profit or income from cities where they have buildings. So first, in turn order, each player can decide whether they want to pay a rice to keep their samurais on the board. So the yellow player has two samurais on the board. They'd have to pay two rice immediately from their supply if they want to keep them both on. If they're unable to, they're going to have to remove one samurai for each rice they're unable to pay. They can also make the decision to say, I'm just going to keep that one on the board by paying one rice. I am not going to pay the second rice, and I'm going to take this back to my supply. That is the player's decision, but if they're unable, they have to remove the samurai back. So every player does that in turn order. Next, you're going to check each city's profit tile. 
and pay the money out based on the player's influence in the city. If there's only one player in the city, they get all of that money. So since yellow is the only player here in Edo, they're going to get immediately 14 from the bank. If there were two players, the one with the most influence would get eight and the second most would get four. But since yellow is the only one, they get the first payout of 14. In this city, we have two players. So we're going to use the two player payout. So red, you get one influence point for each of your regular houses and you get two influence points if you have a trade house in the city. So red has three houses, so three points of influence to yellow's one. So red would get nine and yellow would get three. In this last city, we see that red has three points of influence, but yellow ha also has three. They get one point for a regular house and they get two points since they have a trading house. So both players have three points of influence. If there's ever a tie, you see which player has the first position in the city. So yellow has first position, they're tied, so yellow would get five, red would get three. After you finish the wages and income step, we now check for game end. The game would end if a single player got to 12 victory points or if multiple players, if any player, got to the 12 victory point or later on the score track or if the last of the merchantiles had been already flipped over. That triggers the end game. If the game hasn't ended, we simply put the next merchantile. Every player pulls back their officials and their authorization cards, and we're gonna rotate the start player clockwise to the next one. You'll continue playing the game until the last turn is triggered. As a reminder, the last turn will get triggered when players pass that or if the last merchantile is revealed. When that happens, you always complete that entire game round, including wages and income. So you still have to pay for your samurai on the board if you choose to, and you still get paid your income. And then once that's completed for that last round, we go to final scoring. The first thing we do is go to Edo to see which players are eligible to win the game. You have to have built at least one of your houses in Edo to even be eligible. So if Red had never managed to build a house in Edo, they could not even win the game. So first check to make sure which players are eligible. And then you're simply going to check for two things. For every samurai players have on the game board, they're going to get one victory point added to their current score position. And for every 50 money they have, they'll get one victory point added to their current score track. And then it's simply most victory points wins the game. If there's a tie, whichever player has the most total resources of wood, stone, and rice. But that should be everything you need to set up and play Edo.